An estimated 20 to 25 million Chinese civilians were murdered, along with the death of 4 million Chinese and Japanese military personnel. It was in this hostile environment that Little worked to spread the gospel. He tended to the wounded, fed the hungry, and gave his life to the people in his region of Tianjin, China. Many people have heard of the Scottish Olympic athlete Eric Little, or familiar with his story made famous by the movie Chariots of Fire, but many don't know his connection to China. The early 20th century was a particularly dangerous time to be a missionary in Asia, especially during the Chinese Boxer Rebellion. Thousands of Chinese Christians and missionaries were killed by Chinese militants who were trying to rid the country of all outside influence. Rebels could be seen marching through cities with spears surmounted with the severed heads of murdered missionaries. During this chaotic time, Eric Little was born to two missionaries in Tianjin, China. Around the age of five, Eric and his family moved back to their home country of Scotland. Eric and his younger brother, Robert, attended a boarding school just outside of London. Here, Eric excelled academically and athletically. At his school, he placed first in the high jump, the long jump, and the 100-yard dash in the under-13 age category. Eric was discovering that he had a God-given athletic gift. After graduating, he attended the University of Edinburgh. He found himself a natural fit for the track team and started winning race after race. He quickly attracted the attention of the local press, earning himself the nickname, The Flying Scotsman. By 1923, his fame had grown considerably. He soon realized, as he astonished people with his speed, he had a public platform. Winning races gave him opportunities to speak with crowds about his faith. He determined that his athletic ability was given to him for an eternal purpose. He would eventually be awarded the opportunity to compete on the British national track team at the 1924 Olympics held in Paris, France. Upon receiving the schedule for the Olympic Games, he realized his strongest event, the 100-yard dash, fell on a Sunday. This was a dilemma. For Eric, Sunday was the Lord's Day, not a day for competition, not even in the Olympics. His decision to pass up on an almost guaranteed victory didn't go over well with the press or his fellow citizens. The Scottish people wanted a gold medal and with it, national pride. They felt Eric had failed them and put God above country. Little do they know that Eric had been preparing to honor both God and his country his entire life. <laughs> The schedule for the 1924 Olympics had been published several months earlier, and Little's decision to drop out of his best event was made well before the Games. Little spent the few months leading up to the Olympics training for the 400-meter race. On the morning of July 11, 1924, the Olympic 400-meter final was finally here. The bagpipe band of the 51st Highland Brigade lifted Little's spirit as they played outside the stadium for an hour before it ran. Before the start of the race, Little was approached by a member of his track team and handed a folded note. The note read, In the old book it says, He that honors me, I will honor. Wishing you the best of success always. He recognized the scripture from 1 Samuel 2.30. Little was profoundly moved and encouraged. Finally, someone believed in him and the stance he had taken. Despite his positive attitude, the reality of Little placing in the event was rather bleak. His personal best in the 400 meter dash was not particularly good amongst the international standards. And to make matters worse, he had drawn the worst running position, the outside lane. This was a huge disadvantage because the race begins with each runner in a staggered position, making it impossible for the outside lane to see the opponents behind him for nearly the entire race.
As the race began, Little sent the crowd to their feet. As he turned the first corner and then into the next straightaway, Little flew around the track. Inspired by his teammates' biblical message of bringing glory to God, he left his competitors behind and won the race. His effort and time shocked the world. Little not only placed first, but broke the Olympic and world record for the 400 meter event. His record-breaking performance in a world record time stood for the next 12 years. He later told a reporter, the secret of my success over the 400 meters is that I run the first 200 meters as hard as I can. Then, for the second 200 meters, with God's help, I run harder. It's perhaps one of the greatest Olympic moments in history. Chariots of Fire, the movie based on Eric's life, ends with him taking off at seemingly supernatural speeds, leaving his opponents behind and victoriously crossing the finish line. What's interesting, though, is many people think that that's where Eric Little's story ends. Victorious and celebrated, a hero, fame and glory. But in reality, that was far from the end. Glory and fame for Eric Liddell had nothing to do with an Olympic medal. After his Olympic triumph, Little once again shocked the world by announcing his retirement from sports altogether. At 22 years old, Little decided that his time in the Olympic arena was only part of the race he would run. At the height of his athletic abilities, he left the United Kingdom and dedicated the remainder of his life to missionary work and returned to his birth country of China. Little did he know that returning to China would require a far greater sacrifice than giving up an opportunity for another Olympic medal. In 1925, Little returned to his birthplace in northern China as a missionary. His first attempt at reaching the lost was to teach affluent Japanese students. He believed that by teaching the children of the wealthy, he could impart Christian values into the next generation of leaders in China. As a missionary there, Little taught chemistry in Sunday school classes. He also coached track and field. This month in history, in 1932, Little decided to become a full-time missionary to China. This was not an easy decision to make. China was in the middle of civil unrest and unknowingly setting the stage for World War II. Many consider Japanese occupation in China one of the bloodiest and most brutal occupations in history. It accounted for the majority of casualties in the Pacific theater of war. An estimated 20 to 25 million Chinese civilians were murdered, along with the death of 4 million Chinese and Japanese military personnel. It was in this hostile environment that Little worked to spread the gospel. He tended to the wounded, fed the hungry, and gave his life to the people in his region of Tianjin, China. In 1941, the British government advised all British nationals to leave China. But instead of backing out, Little stayed. His course was set. In a moment of heroism, Little crossed Japanese army lines to work alongside his brother in an extremely poor area. The mission station where his brother worked as a doctor was located in a region that had suffered greatly during the country's civil wars. It had become a treacherous and seemingly continuous battleground. Little arrived at the station in time to relieve his brother, who was ill and needing to be sent back to the United Kingdom. It wasn't long before the fighting between the Chinese army and the invading Japanese troops reached the mission station. The Japanese took over the mission station, and not long after, Little was held captive at the Wei Chin internment camp. With beds pressed together, sickness spreading in the camp, and with only one meal a day, the terrible conditions were overwhelming. Yet, in the midst of this darkness, Eric Little was a light of joy and hope. Little got to work helping the elderly, teaching Bible classes, arranging sports and games for the youth, and teaching science to the children in the camp. They all referred to him as Uncle Eric. One survivor, Langdon Gilkey, who later became a prominent theologian, said of Little, Often, in an evening, I would see him bent over a chessboard or a model boat, or directing some sort of square dance. Absorbed, weary, and interested, pouring all of himself into this effort to capture the imagination of these penned-up youths. He was overflowing with good humor and love for life, and with enthusiasm and charm. 
It is rare indeed that a person has the good fortune to meet a saint, but he came as close to it as anyone I have ever known. The crushing oppression of the internment camp couldn't break Little's spirit. Unfortunately, just a few months before the end of the war, Eric Little, Olympic gold medalist and world record holder, became gravely ill. He sacrificed his life for this mission and passed away at the age of 46. Eric Little, the runner, the missionary, the legend, finished his race. He once told his sister, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Compared to many, Eric Little's short life was an all-out sprint for glory. While his life brought many to their feet in stadiums all around the world, he lived for the applause of heavenly witnesses. He gave his life, not for the accolades of man, but to the glory of God. Thank you.